Um, uh, um, uh, um, I've gotten. I'd like to welcome Median Gruppe Bitnik, contemporary artists working on and with the internet. In the past, they've been known to subvert surveillance cameras, bug an opera house to broadcast its performance to people at home, send a parcel containing a camera to Julian Assange, and physically glitch a building. Some of you may remember their project from 2014 when they built a bot called Random Darknet Shopper and sent it on a three-month shopping spree in the darknet where it randomly bought items like keys, cigarettes, trainers, and ecstasy, and had them sent directly to the gallery space. So who better to start us off with an introduction to Unreal Data and answer the question of what possibilities remain for resistance when it is seemingly impossible to opt out of our data being automatically collected and processed to shape future possibilities and interactions. Using examples, the Median Gruppe Bitnik will explore the inherent ambiguity of data as an opportunity not just to describe the world, but to strategically intervene in it. Yeah, we're Median Gruppe Bitnik, Doma, Carmen, and also from our side, a very warm welcome to Unreal Data Real Effects. So the research for Unreal Data Real Effects started with a trip to Shanghai at the end of 2019. Shanghai has one of the largest and busiest ports of the world. In our artistic uh, work, we take a special interest in technology infrastructures and the principles under which they develop, how power structures influence their development. And the long-standing interest has been for uh, infrastructures and especially commercial shipping. Maritime transports uh, accounts for roughly 80% of all uh, international trade. Um, maritime traffic relies heavily on a global positioning data uh, system uh, to navigate and prevent collusions. This data system is called uh, Automatic Identification System, AIS. So basically, like airplanes, commercial ships, too, are required to broadcast their position data in real time. And like with airplanes, this data is public. So anyone can download an app to their phone and computer to look at the data in real time. When we researched uh, the port of Shanghai online, we quickly discovered chatter about the maritime positioning data having been spoofed all through 2018 and 2019. Thousands of vessels in Shanghai had fallen victim to a strange and novel kind of spoofing. It was very different from spoofing we commonly see during conflicts and wars, where vessels are commonly uh, all spoofed together to one location. The Shanghai data showed ships jumping to locations on perfectly circles on land, on the eastern bank of the Wangpu River. The phenomenon was dubbed the Shanghai uh, crop circles. For days and sometimes weeks, when ships entered a certain area, they suddenly appeared to be moving in large circles. Up to 300 vessels had their location uh, spoofed onto this perfect circle on land. And of course, this image of the, cir of the circles reminded us also of geogo.net, a website by the net artist Jody.org, which did the same things with Google markers, animating Google map icons going crazy as a net art piece. It's unclear who is behind the spoofing. Mark Harris at the MIT Technology Review puts forward three theories. Maybe the ships are be unwilling test subjects for sophisticated electronic warfare systems, and the spoofing is collateral damage uh, in a conflict between the sand mafia and the Chinese state. The sand mafia, which is stealing sand from the riverbanks, and then to hide their ships, they would do the spoofing. The other theory, of course, is that it's the Chinese military is exploring uh, new technologies. The third theory is that traffic is being spoofed by someone interested in darking, uh, in hiding dark traffic. Ships which carry embargoed goods like shipments to North Korea or smuggled oil from Iran. In Germany, people were asking themselves how come that the leader Kim Jong-un of North Korea is always driving the latest Mercedes S class uh, when it's coming out. So maybe this was a way to do it, uh, people think. The cars are shipped to Shanghai, then the ship data gets scrambled, and out of the fog of this data, the car is moved to another ship, which then makes its way uh, to North Korea. 
So shortly after the report on Shanghai circles was published, we were standing on the banks of the Wangpu River, trying to make sense of the difference between the visible ship traffic on the river and the data we saw on our AIS map, which had nothing to do with the reality we saw with our own eyes. So if spoofing live data could lead to real world accidents, had data then not left the realm of merely representing an event? These ships all relied on data to navigate, but when their data systems failed or were wrong, the ship's captains could still fall back on navigation by sight. But what happens in cases where computer-based automated systems solely rely on data for their decisions? Computers do not have the ability to compare the data view to a real-world event. Is it then also possible to create specific real-world outcomes by modifying our data streams? And when we base automated decision-making on data, are we basing the decisions on fact or fiction? The recent pandemic brought many examples of this because so many of our daily interactions suddenly relied on remote systems and all these systems relied on data. We worked from home, connected to our workplaces through software applications that connected us to our colleagues. But these same systems also logged our every click, keystroke, quantifying our productivity in automated reports based on our engagement. Many of these remote work systems especially measured idle time. So assuming that you are only working if you're also moving your mouse. So the pandemic not only brought work to our homes, it also brought home surveillance tools from our bosses. And this became known as bossware. The boss would was breathing down our necks, micromanaging every second of every day. The invasion of surveillance tools into our homes triggered a fight back from workers. Some of them share their ingenious and clever workarounds online. They automated the movement of their computer mouse using tools they had on hand at home. So connecting the computer mouse to their ventilator or placing it on an iPad with an endless scroll of lines or uh, basically simulating movement for the mouse in any way they could find just to get a break from work or pretend to be working while taking a break. At the start of the pandemic, when students in Wuhan were told to install DingTalk on their devices for remote schooling, many started to resist. DingTalk had previously been criticized for lack of privacy and the app already had a bad reputation for helping company, companies micromanage and exploit their employees. The students used a well-tried strategy. They review bombed the app on the app stores. This is a neat idea because the app stores are generally managed through automated processes. Once an app review uh, average falls below a certain threshold, the store kicks the software out. The app company can then, of course, try to intervene, but this is usually a tiresome process with an unpredictable outcome. Have you ever tried to reach Google via email? It's impossible, kind of like to get, get in touch with them. In the case of the Wuhan uh, review bombing, DingTalk chose instead to beg for its life and upload a catchy video to a video sharing site begging students to stop and promise, and they promise to improve on matters of privacy. But we also have examples of unreal data where companies have tried to influence real world outcomes by changing data. In March 2017, the New York Times uncovered that Uber, the taxi app, had tried to evade regulations by building a dummy version of its own app. The secret tool known as Greyball was designed to throw off regulators and help unlicensed taxi drivers to evade the law. Whenever Uber identified the download of its app by a politician, it would deliver the Greyball dummy app. Greyball looked the same as the regular app, showing cars in the streets, but these cars were fake, and much less cars were shown in the app rendered to politicians, downplaying their market share. The hope of Uber was that the regulators, by seeing less cars, were convinced that there is no need to take regulative measures against them, showing them that Uber is not a problem for the normal tax industry, for example. Following the discourse by, uh, by the New York Times, Uber admitted the existence of the tool. The precise way in which it was used has been kept secret. 
Although it's clear that Uber used the tool in the US, France, Belgium, and the UK, it has also never disclosed the list of countries where it was in operation. Uber said it stopped using the tool in 2017. Driverless vehicles have become common on San Francisco streets. Residents are told they are safe, but many still fear the cars. They have been known to stop suddenly for no reason, sometimes blocking emergency vehicles. They have been known to be unreliable, produce traffic jams by blocking big junctions, and are hard to predict for other drivers. So recently, in San Francisco, activists are immobilizing driverless cars with traffic cones. The activists exploit the vulnerability of self-driving cars. A traffic cone placed on the vehicle's hood blocks its sensors and basically renders it inoperable. The cone effectively blinds the car and the vehicle's sidelines start flashing, the vehicle stops and then the car just sits there immobile, unable to move until someone comes to remove its cone. So we'd like to invite you all to Unreal Data Real Effects and let's look what automated systems and how to let them see the only way, what we want to see them. To, the conference today brings together thinkers and artists who all will look at Unreal Data from different angles. angles. In the first part, we'll have a talk by Felix Stalde and a lecture performance by Cornelia Solfrank and Alexander Putik. After a short break, in the second part, Marta Perano will give a talk on gaslighting AI, followed by the interactive performance No Travel Agency by Simon Weckert and Gloria Gamma. Then we invite you out in the hall where you can see Simon Weckert's installation piece Google Maps Hack. The third part will be a prompt battle, a fun format developed by Sebastian Schmieck, where people compete against each other using text-to-speech AI software, and we'll all close the night with a DJ set by DJ Damir, so don't miss that too. Thank you.